Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. All right, so we're going to talk about this whole 16 gigs of RAM. Is it enough? Because we already know 8 gigs is toast. Oh, it is so toast now. Oh, anybody who's still got 8 gig Macs, please throw them in the garbage and go buy yourself a new Mac with more RAM in it, okay? I mean, you are done. You are in virtual world, 100% now. Um, and I'm going to show it to you. So, you know what? We're going to cut off this camera. We're going to go right onto the Mac to a screen recording, and this way you get the whole clarity of the reality here, okay? So bear with me for a second here. All right, so you can see my activity window is up, and uh, the screen recording is chewing up a little bit of extra RAM either way, because uh, we were at like six and a half gigs. Um, so give or take a little bit of fudge room here, all right? So just keep that in mind. Let's fire up Safari, because everybody swears that Safari uses less RAM than Chrome, and, well, it ain't that much difference, but anyway, whatever. So, just to fire up Safari, okay, well, you know, I mean, 8.4 gigs, I mean, minus off the screen recording software, which, um, it's using, like, um, you know, 574 megs for the screen capture, so, but that's okay, so... Minus that off, so yeah, we're basically about seven and a half gigs of RAM there, okay? Not a big deal, but let's open up one window. <laughs> Apple's website, nothing special going on here, kids. It's just a tab, just a tab, nothing to worry about, okay? And we're up over 9.9 .9 gigs, minus your half a gig for the friggin' screen recording software. Um, you know, I mean, that's, um, you know, still that's about nine gigs worth of RAM sitting there. So yeah, if you've got eight gigs, you're kind of toast. Uh, you're going to be in a swap. Now I got 16 gigs. That's as high as the M1 mini could ever go. Same with your first versions of iMacs and a few other computers like our MacBook Airs and so on, right? Anyway, but you know, let, let's, um, yeah, I mean, you, I, I have four tabs open all the time, right? Now, I'm going to do the equivalencies because I'm not signed into anything, and you need to be signed into those particular sites. But, um, except for YouTube, it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyways, so we'll put up the equivalency. So this is like the Hotmail for Apple. Okay, we'll do the equivalency here, which would be, um, I don't know, um, porting toolkit would be Gmail. Uh, Facebook would, would definitely, uh, be up there for, uh, porting toolkit. And our next one is going to be YouTube. These are my usuals. Okay. Now I talked to my wife and she usually has between two to four tabs. So she's got the exact same configuration of a Mac mini as I do. Anyways, so let's, let's see how much RAM we've, we've yanked. Now that's 11 and a half gigs basically. Okay, so we're, we're, we're sitting around basically about 10 and three quarters to, uh, you know, I actually know, yeah, about 10 and a half to 10 and three quarters with a RAM. That doesn't leave a lot left over for programs. Now, what I usually do myself is I'll have iMovie opened up and I will have a video exporting, which will take up some RAM it's going to take up some processing power. Now, I don't have a video to throw in here even as a sample right now. But while I'm doing that, I can go back and play on YouTube and I can watch some videos, okay, while I'm waiting for my export. But because I'm doing that and I'm taking up a lot of GPU and CPU power and some extra RAM just to play a video, well, that taxes everything. And, of course, what happens is it's going to take a lot longer now than three minutes to export my video that normally would be three minutes if I only just ran iMovie, right? And that's the program I use. I mean, because I'm a yo basic, um, you know, I snip, snip, add, add, export. Now, I've also been known to go and watch a video on YouTube and check my channel out, which does get rather sluggy, okay, to do that. Um, I'm still not out of RAM, but I'm, I'm, I'm out of processing power. I, I mean, I've mentioned to you guys before that once you have a performance app on, anything that was in your e-cores or efficiency cores will be shifted uh, to the performance cores at the same time. And everything gets taxed even harder. 
because you can't have all, in my case, eight cores running at the exact same time. They don't do that. Um, so anyway, but I'll go and I'll fire up sometimes you know my my video my iMovie and handbrake will be compressing another video because i'm getting ready to upload a couple videos so that's how i keep things going consistently so that i can you know edit you know get that exported and start compressing that start editing the next one for export get that going and i'm flipping between those two programs and youtube so i can keep entertained while i'm doing stuff because yeah i mean playing a video game is out of the question because I'd definitely be in the swap at that point. But even with those three programs, Handbrake, iMovie, and, you know, having my four tabs on, uh, in my case, Chrome, all right, yeah, I'm not running out of RAM yet, but I am dragging the system down severely, all right? And a video compressor like Handbrake or others, okay, because there are, there, are, there are other compressor programs that are a lot more powerful uh, then handbrake, okay, and they will even tax your system even harder. Handbrake's bad enough. I mean, my my performance cores are hitting like 87 degrees. My fan's hitting about 2,700 RPM, you know, which is still not bad. You know, I mean, it's not detrimental or anything, and I'm not taxing the processors to the point where the processors are getting slowed down because of overheat. Um, it's just that I have no real processing power left so when I try to surf, it's going to be a little on the slow side, <laughs> okay? Because all of that crap, all those programs are in the P cores now, okay? So this is how I figure you can't have all of them running or I would not have any interference with even my browser if the browser could stay in the efficiencies, right? So, and the compressor programs and video programs are performance core apps. Okay, your browsers are not performance core apps. So, but they become as part of that when performance cores are being used from performance core apps. So anyway, only one guy so far has tried to argue that with me. And I said, well, then prove me wrong. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, if you can prove me wrong, then please, because I'm pretty sure I'm right with all the testing I've done. And that was weeks ago. And I've not even gotten a reply from that yet. Period. Not even a, I don't have to prove nothing to you. Well, yeah, actually you do. If you want to prove me wrong, you got to prove it. Otherwise, yeah, put up or shut up is kind of the deal, right? And I guess he's chosen to shut up because, well, maybe uh, he finally discovered I was right. I don't know. Who knows? But I don't really want to get into a piss war with anybody over this. It's just been my experience of the last three years of using this thing every single day. Okay, so, and that's and all the other investigating I've done on top of that seems to be the way these things work which is another reason why I'll never buy another base model M series chip again because they're just not strong enough to really handle the tasking properly okay and besides I also want to start playing some damn Mac games for a change you know and as much as I'd like to get away from PCs I don't think that's going to happen um, a lot of the games I've been downloading um, lately on my PC, they're not even available for Apple, period. And it's like, man, they're so cool. If anything, I need a new PC and a new Mac, but I'll, I prefer to get the new Mac first, okay? I'm gonna work on the PC later, because um, for now, I can make it work. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's where I'm at with how I do things, and this is like the kind of RAM suckage we can expect there, you know? And I, I don't have those programs to really do much with, but I mean, we can just go and fire them up just for giggles, you know? I mean, we'll get to that stage and, you know, handbrake, I mean, we're gonna get to that stage, but they're not gonna use much RAM until they're doing something, okay? Um, but still, I mean, you can see our numbers are changing a little bit because it's always a fluctuation, right? But iMovie is 159.9 megs that it wants to fire it up Okay, um, handbrake is somewhere in here. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And we find out how much RAM all this stuff uses. YouTube page uses 636 uh, megabytes of RAM, and we're not even watching a video. It's like, holy cow. It's gonna be more once we watch a video. Handbrake is, oh yeah, here's handbrake. 
42.1 megabytes before we dump a file in there and start compressing. Then it's going to use a bit more RAM and it's going to chew the hell out of our processors. Okay, and I can keep an eye on all my stuff through max fan speed control. Okay, now the uh, number up top for the temperature on my screen, um, that's actually the performance cores uh, that are going on. And the efficiencies, of course, are, are not doing anything right now. So they're kind of just getting heated up just because they're on the same die. Okay, but they don't follow the temperatures all the way the same. So they, they're different. And I can keep an eye on hard drive temperatures too for all my external SSD drives and my internal. My hottest one is my Western Digital Blue. I gotta figure out a way to cool that puppy a little bit more. I might have to change it to a different case, I think. Um, but uh, that or puts, find some kind of a shielding that'll work. Cause I've tried many different levels or quality grades of silicon and it just makes the damn things run hotter. So it's gotta, I gotta figure out another cooling process for that one. But um, either way, that's how I keep an eye on things. And you can go into the preference here and you can go to menu. And of course, exhaust is the fan I wanna see uh, for my speeds. Um, in here, I can pick whatever sensors I wanna keep an eye on. In my case, because I pretty much live in performance cores only, well, that's the one that I wanna see because that's what's important to me. I don't care about E cores and where they sit. Um, you can have it read out SATA drives, NVMEs, eGPUs, but we don't have that support on Apple Silicon. Precise display temperature whenever possible, okay. General tabs, auto start on boot up of the computer. Check for updates when the app starts because they do update this from time to time um, as needed. And this is free. Now, if you pay for it, apparently there's other things that get unlocked for you that you don't get right now. So but I've never paid for it yet. And you can custom your fan speed. Now, here's where you gotta be careful with this program. If you are going to preset a specific speed for your fan, it will not climb higher. That is going to be the speed and that is it. So be careful with that, all right? I leave mine on automatic. Um, anyhow, so, Eight gigs we definitely know is completely cranked out toast now. 16 gigs is kind of borderlining, you know, and if you're doing absolute basic video editing like I've been doing for the last, since 2008, I mean, 16 can last you a bit longer, but I, you know, I'm guessing a year and a half-ish doing things how I do it, okay? Now, this guy on YouTube that I saw, he was running 50 tabs in his browser and I'm like dude what the hell are you running that you need 50 flipping tabs like <laughs> I, I've got like probably about two or three hundred favorites in my browser but I'm not having those opened all the time there's no point to it like I can only look at so much stuff you know what I mean um I mean, I can understand if you're doing a lot of research or something, or I don't know, but he bought the wrong power level of a machine. He bought the wrong RAM. Even on his second go around, he still, the only thing he changed about the base configuration was the RAM. He went from 16 to 24, and then he's like complaining about 32 gigs, and it's like, but 32 gigs, I mean, that's double the RAM. You would have been good for the next five years with the stuff you do, maybe, but your computer probably burn out by then because he taxes the hell out of the thing. Um, I mean, those base man fours are not made to do the crap he wants to do all at once. Even the M1s would have fried by now doing that stuff. But anyway, I don't know. It's, I don't, it, you do you. I mean, I don't really care what you do. It's up to you, but I'm just trying to, talk about the 16 gig of RAM situation and if it's really, you know, any good. And the, the fact is, as long as you're keeping things under control and staying out of swap, 16 is fine. But if you're trying to do anything close to what even that other guy was doing or some other people, you, you might as well just go for the M -Mini, M4 Mini Pro if, that, if that's what you're gonna do for the mini platform and chalk it like right to the hilt for the RAM and for the processor and GPU, and you'll be a lot happier. But if you're looking at AAA gaming, yeah, you're gonna probably wanna wait for the studio because it's, 
it's the only thing going to have enough real nuts to do stuff decently. Um, not saying you can't do decent gaming on, on the Mini Pro if it's cranked to the hilt or, you know, even a MacBook Pro might be okay for a lot of games, but you're still going to be missing out on way too many games. But I guess it depends on the games you play. Um, but yeah, you know, I know people who buy Macs don't buy them for gaming. Yes, they damn well do. Just because you don't, don't mean nothing. A lot of us do. All right. And we're all getting sick and tired of Apple not putting up enough on gaming. Um, they should have been concentrating on this stuff years ago and we'd already be further ahead of the game, but they didn't, you know, they, because we could run Windows 10 before it wasn't that cri critical, you know? And but now we can't run Windows anymore unless it's under an emulation program and you better have an even higher spec Mac just to run the damn parallel software properly so you get a decent Windows experience because otherwise it's going to suck royally which it does for gaming anyway so just go to crossover which would be much better but you still need a lot more RAM you need GPU power and everything else for these games and not all these games are going to work fine even under crossover either. Same as Paul the Tall Porting Toolkit. Some games, great. Other games, no way. Not going to happen, dude. Not in any lifetime. Anyhow, that's what I got. We're done. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Comments, as always, go down below. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.